Tonight on Frontline, education's hidden crisis. Why do you want to drop out? Why are you leaving? Because they're not nice school. OK, first of all, you're only 16. Hundreds of thousands of children failing to finish school every year. A lot of kids who should be graduating are not graduating. There's a problem here. Frontline takes you on a journey through one American high school. This school was once referred to as a dropout factory. Following four at-risk students through an entire semester at Houston's Sharpstown High. See, I'm mad at I'm shaking. You know how I'm supposed to become? What's going to be the breaking point is his anger. I have to graduate from high school no matter what. He's tremendously at risk. It's a big push for him to graduate on time right now. I think she's been in class about five times in five weeks. Life is life. School is school. School and life, two different things. If I go to college, that's a big, big step for my whole family. A look at the struggles. You turn your back on me. You don't even appreciate what I do for you. The challenges. This isn't the streets. He wants to press charges right now. <laughs> and the triumphs. To get it, we can. Whatever it takes. No excuses. Of Dropout Nation. Good morning, Apollos. Today is day 109. It is Thursday, February 2nd. At this time, we ask that you stand as we honor America and Texas with our pledges. Come on, guys, straight to 140. You're late. Detention, you gotta get to school on time. Stop, don't even try it. Go to 140. Make sure black Adidas jacket with white stripes down the sleeves comes in there. He's trying to escape. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Our attendance is really low, and so we're trying to do whatever it takes to get them to know that it's important to be here for homeroom, first period, second period, every period. IDs, have them out, please. We're a school of about 1,300 kids. We're mostly Hispanic and African American. But the common denominator is poverty. Our kids come from some of the, some pretty crappy conditions in around Houston. It has been a school that maybe people forgot about over the years. It has had a terrible reputation. It's all ghetto there, and, and that's where the pregnant girls go, and it's called a dropout factory. I mean, the, those numbers don't lie. The pressure is to get better. So we were still working to change that culture. Why do you want to drop out? Why are you leaving? Because I don't like school. Why don't you like school? Hey, 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 look at him when you talk to him. Come on, come on. Talk to me. Okay, first of all, I don't understand why you think you're going to not go to school. You're only 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be 17 on May. I don't and what does that come mean? Out of school, I'll be 18. He had it planned in his mind that when he turned 17, then 18, he was going to drop out and there's nothing. And that's the, the sad thing is they feel that when they turn 18, we can't touch them. Where you going to live at? You going to live with your mom? Yeah. For the rest of your you life? Know. You going to work? I ain't... I'm asking you, are you going to work? Um, hello? You have a plan? That's a secret. Why you don't want education, sweetie? That's a whole other story. You want to talk to me privately? Take her. Come on. You talk to us, Washington. And so I had to break down, you know, what are you going to do? Where are you going to live? Where are you going to, I'm going to live with my mom. And, and then after a while, we, we, when we broke it down, that's not where he wants to be. And he would, if he does, and when he does graduate, he will be the first one in his family to graduate high school. So you saved one today? Yes. <laughs> One of many. <laughs> Always putting out fires. <laughs> we are going to get Marcus this morning. Marcus is failing both of his first and second period classes. He, um, he usually doesn't get here until about third or fourth period. He has like a 28 average in Spanish, and he needs Spanish to graduate. There's a lot of students that you know, 
I either text or call them to make sure they're up and get to school because a lot of them don't have transportation or even an adult in their life that can help them with those kind of things that they're not prepared to deal with. It's all a part of Sharpstown. Oh my God, this is so close to the school. This is a joke. It's not even a block. There he is. I am gonna give you a piece of my mind. You hear me? Wow. How far do you think you are from the school? It's like five minutes. It's not even five minutes. We are I usually miss the first and second period. I got to my first period class and did, did some work. Classes I'm here, A's and B's. Classes you're not here for? Yeah, them F's. <laughs> I don't go because it bores me sometimes. That's why I go home early. I go to school half a day and then just walk off. Go home. What time do you go to bed? About two something, three. So that's your problem, and that's why you can't wake up. What's what's causing you to stay up so late? Stress? How was your dad and your mom last night? My pops was drunk, like pissy drunk. Okay. My parents, they drink a lot every day. My mom, she has a job. She a good lady, she is, but she just has a drinking problem. And and it's because of my dad. He's a, he's, he doesn't work. He, 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 he drinks, you know? But, but when, he get, when, he, when he's not drunk, coolest person in the world. I love him to death. Cool, cool. But when he get drunk, he acts like he's six. And, and you know, I, he, he, I gotta take care of him, basically, when, when he's drunk. So did you have any confrontations? A little bit, but. Did you do what I said? Mm-hmm. What'd you do? I just went in my room. Okay. And what'd you do in your room? Smoke. <laughs> do your parents know that you're sitting in your room smoking? Mm hmm And they don't care? They, I mean, like, yeah. They don't like that I smoke. But it's like, I smoke. I mean, it's just me. I got a lot to deal with, you know. I got personal home oh, problems, but I try not to let that get in the way of my school because cause I don't like walking around with a mad face, you know, just angry at the world because cause, cause my parents making me mad. I can't take it out on everybody else, but I got a lot of stress on me. All right, we need to get you to Spanish. I don't put in the effort. I know that. Mm -hmm. I have everybody that's just really putting the effort in and helping me, and it's, it's my life. And, and like, I realize it, though. I, I do. You get up there, get to class. Yes, ma'am. All right. Plenty of kids that want to quit school and drop out. But it seems like every time I think that I want to drop out, people have been telling me not to. If you drop out, then you're going to be like everyone else, in which I don't want to be like everyone else. I want to be different. We got a couple of seats left here. And my mama wanted me to graduate. She wouldn't be her only kid to graduate, so that's my goal right now. She didn't graduate, neither did my two older sisters or my two older brothers. And I'm the in the middle, so I got to get a positive role model for my, two, my younger siblings. So I want to show them I want to graduate, so I'm getting a diploma. Number one, what is it? Angry. Angry, yes. I frustrated. I'll take frustrated. Mad. Mad. This is his fifth year in high school. Absent? You know, he's 19. Okay, he should yes. have graduated last year. All right. But Lawrence just, he has major anger issues. He blows up and is disrespectful, and he curses and stuff like that. And that's what's hard for me, because he's so close. And he's a smart kid. He's an articulate kid. So that's my, my biggest goal, is to get him through the next four months. All right, third one across. Nervous. Uh, no, they are hopeful. Hopeful. I want to see him succeed, because you feel like if they get to the point where they drop out, then it's just downhill from there. I mean, it's just what would become of him. Lawrence, he's a hard one to figure out. He's a personable kid, and when he's OK, He's as nice as can be. But when he's not okay, um, something obviously has 
caused him to be very angry. You can't stay inside with the hat on. Is the hat on my head right now? No, no but go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. G be tripping. Like, he take the smallest things and try to blow it to the biggest proportion. It, it seemed like every time I come shot down or something, I get in trouble for the little pettiest things. Sometimes it feel like everybody against me here sometimes. I mean, then some days it feel like everybody with me. So them days, I just roll with the punches. I keep going. You can't wear a hat in there. And that's it. No, yeah, yes, you do. Come on, no. Come on in here. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's the whole interaction of doing school that he doesn't get. I mean, you saw it today. Okay, it's the hat there. It's the officer that's telling him to stop. You got to give up the hat. Oh, that's definitely not going to happen. OK, that's your choice. It's a bad one. And the odds are probably that he's not going to make it. But you don't give up on him. Get in here. Where have you been? Three days? Oh. All right, come on, let's get you a pass to class. I have been missing some days, but like, I know missing days like bring me back on my work, but I'm a very intelligent person, I can do it. I believe in myself. So you haven't been here for the last three days? Why? Because I have been here How are you gonna graduate? Mm -hmm. How are you going to do well? I, I can't school now. Sometimes it ain't easy to get up and go to school because you don't want to be around everybody with your problem. It really is. When you ain't got nobody there, I'm doing all this by myself, on my own. And you're going to have a good day today? No problems? No. OK, OK. She doesn't live with anybody. So she's been all over the place. She stays with friends. She called one night, like at 10 o'clock, and didn't have anywhere to stay. She was staying on the streets. But she's here, so we'll do the best we can. Life is life. School is school. School and life, two different things. Juniors, what year are you graduating from college? 2017. Sophomores? 2018. I love school. I want to go to college and stuff. I want to be something. I want to be an uh, obstetrician. That's what I want to be. <laughs> there are so many endearing qualities to Sparkle. Aww. She doesn't think anything is impossible. On her good days, she's just the sweetest, greatest, smartest kid. Why is it helpful to understand the concept of future value? Go ahead, Sparkle. So you can prepare and know what you're getting yourself into, and you will know a way to go and how far to take it. She has great aspirations. I mean, when she wrote her vision of her life in 10 years, not only was she a doctor, but she had lived in Europe, spoke many languages, and had taken etiquette classes in Paris. And all I can think is, if you don't at least get out of high school, every one of those dreams is pretty much snatched away from you. It's helpful to understand future values. <clears throat> Go ahead, Sparkle. As much school as she's missed, I feel like she's guaranteed to have to do summer school unless she feels like repeating 10th grade. She's already a little bit older than she should be to be in the grade she's in. Once a kid repeats two grades, they're almost completely on track to drop out. So the next few months are crucial for her. It ain't just school. It's my life too, so it's, it's a lot going on. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to cry in front of all these people. Sometimes I have different moments to where I push the people that's really here for me, I push them away. Why? Because in my life, a lot of people that came in and left out, so I don't let nobody in. I'm going to leave you where you at, on the outside, looking in. That's not a Friday shirt. I was in North Carolina. Um, I was retired from the public school system after 31 years or so, but still working. I wanted to look at something a little different. We still have too many kids that don't believe they can have a successful future. Come here, come here. I'm not wrong. Our kids come from stuff that we don't even want to think about. We can't even begin, I, I don't think, to grasp and understand. What poverty does is our kids come and go. They start academically a year or two behind. 
Somewhere along the way, they've gotten lost, and they, they have to catch up. You see the signs. Erratic behavior. Sometimes it's isolation. Sometimes it's just blatant acting out, excessive absences. Did you eat this one? And then you start to have the conversation over breakfast because they haven't eaten. And they say, well, I don't have a place to stay. It puts a strain on people. Why are you not in the class? I have a bad, there's no star because I didn't eat last night because of my job. I got up at 12. Okay. So I just try to get. Okay, well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. I wasn't able to eat breakfast either, so. Do you eat bananas? Yeah. You want that one? For Marco, getting a snack out of that cabinet is his touch base and just letting me know I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> it's all good. I'll see you later. Okay. When was the last time you ate? Yesterday at school and until right now. Why didn't you eat them? I worked, and uh, I, I wasn't able to uh, eat, because I, I have money, and uh, I, went, I went home, and I got ready, right I had to go to work. My junior year, my, that's when my father got deported, like the first year, and that's when everything just went and changed, like my whole life changed. Just seeing my mom cry just made me want to not go to school no more and just help her pay her bills and help my little sister stay in school. Need some help? Yes. Can I get some of the um, spicy jerk turkey? I dropped out for a whole semester. I was 17 at the time, 16. And I was like working 40 hours or more a week, which I still do. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. And I didn't get off till like 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning, got home like around 4 or 5. Then I had to sleep for like 3 or 4 hours. And then I don't know. I was never used to this that life, you know, so I just had to suck it up. But my mother, she cared. She used to tell me, you're gonna go back to school one day, right? And I was like, yes, mom. I have to graduate from high school no matter what. My brother didn't do it, and I don't wanna be cutting grass like him. It was just one day I was coming from work. It was like around three, I just saw the sign that said Sharps on high school. And then I was just like, I need to come back. Like, I have to go back to school. When Marco came to school, and I remember this, he was so happy. He goes, Miss Church, Miss Church, you know, um, I came back to school. You know I dropped out, Miss Church, you know, I'm really going to give it a try. I'm really going to give it a try. However, I must be transparent with you. It's a big push for him to graduate on time right now. Dean Church, I'm in a conference. I'm going to turn the radio down. Thank you. Marco's no angel. Every day isn't a wonderful adventure with Marco. Well, it is an adventure. It's not always wonderful. First of all, um, I want to talk about Marco's behaviors in class, because you, as you know, that Marco, there was an issue in your classroom the day before yesterday. We're trying to support Marco to help push him through this process. He's going through a process right now. When Marco came into the classroom, thought he was going to do well, and he started acting out. And I tried to talk with him, and I called his parents, and I was unable to get them. Marco's mother is actually in the process of being deported. That's pretty much the reason why when you were making those phone calls at home, you could not reach your parent. My mom was arrested January the 1st. I was worried about my mom getting deported. To be in this position where your father's already gone, and now you're at risk of having your mother be deported, that's a lot. That day, I don't know, I just lost it because of what my family problems, you know, mm -hmm. what I was going through. Mm -hmm. I snapped real quick, and I didn't, I couldn't control it. It was something I should learn how to do, control my, like, my emotions and my behavior, and just, you know, be the bigger person, just walk away from it. And do you know that with all this going on, Marco's here at 7.45 in the morning, with all of this going on, so to me, you know, yes, he's at risk. He's tremendously at risk. But is this student trying? Yes. Does the student always make the right decisions? No. Do you think we're going to see him in a cap and gown at the end of the semester? We better see him in a cap and gown at the end of the semester. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. However, if we do not, we're going to lose him. And I don't want to lose him. And a 
few years, Houston is supposed to surpass Chicago in terms of size, so we will become the third largest city in the country. We serve about 204,000 students. We have 70,000 children who can't read on grade level. There's no question in my mind, when I got here, our graduation rate was too low, our dropout rate was too high. There's no discussion. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. I got a letter from our Commissioner of Education that said you have these four high schools that are, we have designated as dropout factories. Sharpstown High School was one of those four schools. We used to do focus groups with kids who dropped out. And we'd ask, why did you drop out? I was just shocked when I heard more and more and more about school's not interesting, it's not challenging, it's not engaging. Uh, they don't care about me there. And that's the part that we can fix. And so we started making a program called Apollo 20. I want to get started by telling you a little bit about Apollo. And it is called the Apollo 20 because we started off with four high schools and then we had some middle schools and we just included elementary schools last year, which makes 20 schools. We have five tenets, human capital. That means to have a highly effective teacher and principal in every school. We started making some changes and holding people accountable. Increased time on task, and that is we have a, a week that we come in earlier. We ended up adding an hour to the school day. We added two weeks to the school year. High dosage of tutoring. It's great service to our students. We tutored all ninth graders in math for 70 minutes a day. A culture of high expectations and data-driven instruction. Making changes as needed so you address student needs. We also went out and raised about $17 million. We got a huge award from J.P. Morgan Chase, and foundations here in Houston really stepped up, and we had individual contributions. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little miffed that we had to go out and raise the money. I quite frankly believe these are our kids. We ought to be figuring out how to find the money in our budget. But we got a lot of pushback uh, from some folks here in Houston. It's why are you spending that amount of money on those kids? And it's been controversial because we decided we would reconstitute the school and replace the principals, all the assistant principals. Uh, the teachers would have to reapply for their jobs. Quite frankly, Rob was the first person who came to mind. He is the kind of guy that uh, is gonna do whatever it takes. He cares deeply about all kids. And Rob doesn't understand failure. He, he sees success. They called me on a Tuesday. I was here on a Thursday. And that afternoon, they wanted an answer. That's how our superintendent works. Hey, Sam, what are you drinking? There's no reason to have a school, even an inner city school, that has kids of poverty that can't be a good school. Whatever it takes, no excuses. And, and that's the way it should be. Brandy was one person that I wanted to have on campus. Half mom, half statistician. I keep forgetting her title, because I'm not into titles. You got here on time, I saw you. <laughs> but Brandy is here to help us focus in on the data. I can't figure out all the stuff she does with data, and, and, and she likes it. This is our data room. Part of the Apollo 20 program, it, it's a visual of every student on our campus by class period, by subject, um, and it tracks how they're doing and what we need to do to help them improve academically. But the students down here that failed have a yellow dot or a brown dot, which means that those students are in some sort of double dose math. So they're either in a math, an extra math computer lab course, or they have a two-on-one tutoring course. So what do you like? Typical. Remember what that means? Flip, keep Flip it. We have a lot of kids that do really well in elementary school and kind of fell off in middle school and then keep falling in high school. Whoa, what's going on with him? Somehow they fell off of being involved and in learning in school, and so we use the data to kind of pull those kids and talk to them. See, look at that. You got 45. You only missed 12 of the multiple choice. Mm -hmm. All you need is the writing. So are you going to spend yeah. every waking hour with her doing the writing? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And you're not going to drop out? No. Look at me. You promise? Yeah, I promise. 
I mean, mean, I got him to pass the math. What are you doing? Excelling academically helps them emotionally. You know, it helps them feel confident and successful. So we work on all of it, every side of it. I'm 17 years old, I have two kids. My newborn is two months, his name is Joaquin, and my daughter is about to be three years old next month. So for her high school career, she's had a baby, and she's gonna graduate this year. One of the things that I noticed when I started here at Sharp's Tongue was that there were a lot of girls that were pregnant and or that had kids. There were probably 30 to 35 girls on our campus. So I started the Teen Moms and Expectant Moms Club. We've had lots of girls in the last four months end up pregnant. So what you're doing right now is writing your story. Convince the other girls in this school to try to wait till after you graduate. Okay, who wants to go next? Come on, Nakia, go. I have a two-year-old daughter. Her name is Kiana Jenkins. Nakia, at the end of clubs, reluctantly told me that she's worried that she may be pregnant again. So I'm going to go get a pregnancy test, and she's going to come down, and we're going to find out. So what's happening? Are you scared? Yes. Have you thought about what happens if it's yes? I don't know yet, but I'm not ready for another. I'm going to support you no matter what. But I am disappointed that, you know, you've been through this before, you know? And, and I want you to go to college. Yeah, I want to go to college, too. That's why I'm like saying I'm not ready for another one. All right. So, all right? You need the directions? You I'm know what to do. Mm -hmm. OK, OK. So just go into the, you know where the teacher's bathroom is right there? Mm, yeah. Have you looked at it? No. It's no. Oh, yes, thank you, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is good news. Some stuff to me is, is more important than others. Football is one of the most important to me. Uh, I love football. Because it's, it's so physical and like you actually can hit somebody and not get in trouble for it. All your stress that you didn't have for the past any time, just period, you can take it out on a football field. Feet, 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 jump. It feels so good when you hear Everybody calling your name just from the stands, everybody, that feel good. Then the lights, that's the best part. The lights, they just shine and dine, just on you. You're running the ball, the lights showing. It's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You don't give me what I want now, I'm going to take it out of you after practice. So you better get after it. He could definitely go to college and play football. Hands down. I have kids that are going to college this year that aren't nearly as talented as him. That's how much talent he has. That's really the only reason I, I come to school to play football. During the football season, since seventh grade, I make good grades, come to school every day. And then as soon as the football season's over, it seems like I just fall off. Marcus went to uh, Westbury High School, which is a school right down the way, actually our, our rival school. And uh, he got kicked out of Westbury. And the principal would not allow him to come back. And he didn't come here until November 
of last year. You go right on, and your left on. Right what Marx's is problem is, is that there's a rule in place that if you transfer from one school to another school, you have to sit out a full calendar year. Push! Because he's a junior, and he, he actually arrived here after football season. He technically wouldn't be eligible to play until after football season. You have left Let's go. If you had to sit out a year because of the transfer rule, if the year's to November 21st, you'd be eligible for basketball. But, I won't be here. Yeah, but, but, you wouldn't, but you wouldn't be eligible for football. But, I have to play football. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't say I can, I'm going to finish school, because really that's, football is my life, you know? I, I, I got to play football. I have to. It's, it's no not telling me I can't play. I can't, I can't deal with that. That's basically telling me don't come to school no more. I want you in school playing, because this could be your ticket. Do you have $25,000, $30,000 go to the school of your choice right now? OK, what would that be? What, what school would that be? I want to just go to college, right. period. I really, if, I really wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Right. I, yeah, because really, because. I, I never thought that I'd actually go to college. Mm -hmm. Nobody did. My mama never went, my brother, my dad, my sister, mm -hmm. nobody, you know? If I go to college, that's a big, a big step, big step for my whole family. And I don't, any college, any college. If, if Marcus he doesn't have the opportunity to play football, that is a great chance that Marcus won't finish high school. A great chance. This is a poster of my life. I was born on Houston, Texas on August 31st, 1994. My class is called The Game of Real Life. The class is aimed primarily at kids at high risk of dropping out of school. Why were you arrested? For <laughs> vandalism of school property. And this class is to teach them financial literacy and college application slash skill building. In order to get that kind of job, I need to have a degree on me in criminal justice or chemistry, one of those. The idea is that if we show them what is attainable and how to get it, then hopefully they'll stay in school and pursue those dreams. That's my life, a little bit of my life. But Sparkle, I haven't really seen her this semester. And it's February, and literally, I think she's been in class about five times in five weeks. I need to know, where you been? You haven't been in class? Oh, because, miss, I don't know, miss. I was sick. That's why I wasn't here for a long, like the, what, a week? I was sick, I wasn't feeling good. What I'm trying to get to, Sparkle, is we looked at your records. We know your real address is nowhere near Sharpstown High School. So this school and this district do not have to allow you to be on this campus. And Mr. G and everybody else is asking, why are we spending all these resources, our time, our energy, our patience, our money, our space to try to make a way for you to be successful, but we all feel like we're meeting a wall with you. I think school, it ain't nothing but adding on to my problem. It's a big situation right now with my son, and that situation is not making me happy. All I know about Sparkle's background is what she first shared in class. She shared that she had a baby, she was from New Orleans, moving from New Orleans to Houston after Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. was really traumatic. Like and then her mom died, and oh. she lived with family. And slowly throughout the year, it's become, now I live with just with friends, I sleep on their couch, I sleep on their floor. And apparently somewhere between all of this, now her son has been taken away from her as well. Even if a quarter of that is true, it's a devastating reality for, you know, a kid in high school. The last time I even really seen you, besides yesterday, was about two weeks ago. If I can't do it, then I can't do it. I'm one person trying to do a whole bunch of million other things. What about if I say to you, as a student, that's your only job? Your only job is to come to school. That is not only my job. School ain't my life. School ain't the only thing that I'm, that's working through my life right now. I got a whole bunch going on right now. 
a whole lot. I got to get my son. I got to work on school. I got to try to get a job. Make sure I can lay somewhere every night. Make sure I can eat every day. That's my job. Do you want that to be your future? Not at all. It shouldn't even be like this right now. Absolutely I'm too young not. for this. That is your future from this moment forward. Unless you decide to get here every day and get your education and get your diploma. Isn't that enough for you to put forth your full effort? No. Because, let me tell you why. I'm so used to people coming in my life and leaving out. I'm scared to let any of y'all in. I really am. I can't let nobody in that's going to leave me. Either you there, you there, you not, you not. I don't think any educator ever forgets the kid or kids they believe they failed, but it stings so bad when you can think of someone and go, oh my God, I hope that kid turned out okay. Um, but if you've had that experience, I think all it does is fuel you to work that much harder. So for me, clearly I'm thinking of a kid my first year of teaching who was a nightmare, but um, I hope he learned to read. <laughs> I hope he learned to behave. Um, but maybe because I had that burn my very first year, that's why I want to work so hard with the next one or the next sparkle. If we fail, it will be a great tragedy for us, for sparkle. But I think everyone is going above and beyond to do everything they can so that, so that she doesn't fail and we don't fail her. Lawrence doesn't really have an adult in his life. And even though he's 19, I feel like I want to be that adult that's kind of pushing him along. Otherwise, I feel like he'll just fall off. Good morning. You still sleepy? So how come you didn't go talk to Mr. Gasparello yesterday? Mr. Gasparello said you walked through his office or whatever, but you didn't say anything to him. I wasn't in the mood to speak to My relationship with him began with him being disrespectful to the teacher and me kind of pulling him out. And that's where I kind of found out about his background and the things that had been happening to him with his family and things like that. You've got a goal and you're so close to it, right? What's that goal? Graduating. Okay. How long you got? Four months. That's right, it's four months. I mean, surely four months you can do it. You can avoid confrontation. My personal life is crazy. I don't think nobody can deal it, but Miss Babar tried to help me with it. And it's driving her crazy. So, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It felt like all the weight was on my shoulders for some reason. So the smallest thing is big to me now. So it just keep piling up. But I talked to Miss Babar, so she helped me knock stuff down. So it don't, it's not as big as it was. Are those new students? <laughs> Come here. What's wrong with you? Come here. Why are you why are your eyes all red? You want hey, 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 hey. Can we go sit down and talk? Lawrence was sent here from California. And then he said he was involved with gangs and drugs. He lost some people very close to him and came here to get away from that. And that's how he ended up here at Sharpstown. What's wrong? What's going on? What happened? His mom has been in and out of prison, and I think that affects him a lot, that he has no control over her, you know, and what happens to her. So he goes all day thinking about it and being sad and then just kind of gets to that point where it wells up and he can't control it anymore. I tried to hide it. I just tried to think about it. Yeah. The main thing I've got my mother is the only thing I care about. Yeah. Okay, but let's be honest. What was she doing? Staying in trouble. That's why I, I wanted to graduate, so I could move down here. That was my whole goal since I've been down here. Let's see what all the joy, all the happiness, all everything is gone. 
don't take today and make it the way your life is permanently. Today is just a bad day. I've been doing like this every day. You have not. I have seen you. Florence, you're telling me that... Yet. I don't just like showing my emotions to nobody. That's why I don't like crying right now. You love your mother. Love her, respect her. But do something with your life so that you don't end up like that. Do you want to graduate? You don't care? I don't know. It is too much. It's way too much right now. It's gonna get better, I promise you. I know it's hard now, but it's gonna get better. I can't look at somebody like Lawrence or Marcus and not wanna do everything I can to help them. But there's 1,302 of them here, and it's just hard to make sure that every single one of them is okay every day. That's the burden that we deal with. Knowing that there are kids that may slip through the cracks. Y'all a little too loud. You're too loud, Miss Bernardin. Stop being so loud. The biggest obstacle I think that Marco had to, you know, overcome this year, his mom was at risk of being deported. And so that was very, very heavy on him. Keeping in mind that while he's dealing with that, he's also looking at, oh my gosh, am I gonna graduate on time? I said, Marco, May is, you know, really, really doesn't look good right now. We'll either try to summer or even December next year. And then his mom got out. That was almost like the birth of a second chance. Okay, so talk to me a little bit. You're all excited at, at the soccer game. I had just found out my mom uh, was not getting deported. When I saw her, I just started crying. And right now, I'm just happy I have her back. How long has it been since you saw her? It was like a whole month. Okay. But my dad, he was like, he got deported two years ago. I know. So that's all I had. I was just excited to have her back, because, I mean, no, no dad, no mom graduating this year. And not having no family members to see me, is, it was going to suck, you know? But now I'm, I'm happy to have her back, you know? What was her advice to you, though? To graduate this year. To graduate? And are you on track to do that? Yes, sir. OK. Are you sure? Yes, sir. OK. Well, that's a good thing. Yes, sir. It's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> I can't even believe it. Like, right now, nothing could, you know, I'm just happy right now. I just, I'm, not, I'm not trying to walk around school. I'm trying to go to class, but, you know. I know, I mean, there's nothing I can do. We'll get to class, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Here in Houston, right now it's about 12% of our kids drop out. Three years, four years ago it was 22%. And so we've made a lot of progress. We're continuing to make progress, but it's a challenge, I and mean, it is a huge challenge. One of the most difficult parts is, is how do you count a kid as a dropout? The record keeping part of it is it really shouldn't be this difficult. We know that large numbers of kids here in Houston and all across this country are not finishing high school. Children at Risk has been around here in Texas for over 20 years. We look at numbers and we figure out maybe what are the real numbers? You know, what's, what's sort of the truth behind the numbers that they're giving us? In the state of Texas, you have the Texas Education Agency, which asks for data in a certain way. And while this is very, convoluted, and, and, and I think they maybe make it purposefully convoluted that they create these things called lever codes, which are uh, a student is a lever for this reason, and when they are a lever for this reason, uh, they are not a dropout. So they'll designate things like children that have left for homeschool, children that have left the country, children that have left for private school, which seem reasonable, right? When you break this stuff down, what you see is things like across the state, it's in the junior year, a time when kids might be dropping out, that the schools are saying that parents are taking their kids out of school for homeschooling. We know that that doesn't really happen. So for us, there's something going on there. And then we also see that it's in their senior year that across the state, people are being marked as leaving for private school. 
Now, when do kids leave in their senior year and decide to go to private school? It might happen in the movies, you know, the, the bad girl or the bad boy goes to uh, another school for the senior year, but it doesn't happen in the very large numbers that we're seeing in the data here in the state of Texas. And if we don't have the right data, then we can't begin to solve this. So if we have a dropout problem, what is the size of that dropout problem? And now how do we begin to fix it? Good morning, Apollos. Today is day 114. It is Thursday, February 9th, 2012. What's going on this week? I don't know if there's a typical week here. Uh, we seem to have had a lot of kids in um, life crisis situations. We had a little uh, skirmish during lunch. A fight broke out, and Marcus was one of the kids involved. And in the process of him getting handcuffed and going to the police office after the melee, Marcus was found to have marijuana on him. And that brought a charge, and that brought him off to jail. He looked up at me in handcuffs, and he said, Coach, so football is over. And I said, probably so. And I was just totally disappointed. And I looked at him and just kind of walked out. He just made the worst decision ever. Marcus, any others to follow up? I um, called and talked to his dad last night. I said, what's, what's going on? What's the situation? And he said that Marcus went to jail. Um, he said that Marcus never called him. It's just a matter of where's Marcus? Yeah, I'm trying to find out if uh, somebody that was charged and is said to be in, your, in, in jail is being released today. I can't imagine that there's a training that encompasses everything that you will encounter being an educator. We're here for students, and that's the number one priority. So he's going to court in the morning, criminal court four. <gasps> oh my god, I gotta go get my son. Hey, I'm on my way. Usually every day my son gets dropped off by the bus at the back of Sharpstown at 3.15. Usually I'm on time. It's not very often that I'm late. No. It is hard sometimes because I feel like I have three kids at home and I spend a lot of time dealing with the kids here. That was a good They have a good life and they have parents that love them and a lot of the kids here don't necessarily have that. Mommy's got to go to work, baby girl. Why? Mm, I think. They need that. You know, kids should have that till they're 17 or 18, so. When I go to jail for attacking Ruffin, you know why. What happened? He just hit me up for no reason. I was playing with this girl, whatever, to my calm down, said, don't grab him, don't grab him, get off him, son. He's doing dirt away from me again. I said, don't get off him, quit touching me. Then he gonna try to choke me out for no reason. Just know, when I hit him in his face and I go to jail, you know why. Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. Lawrence just, he has such anger issues. This Typically, no, something you know, happens like, every other day. If he's here for two days, something's gonna happen one of those two days. Just know, he touched me anytime time before I leave this bitch, I'm gonna punch him in his face. I'm not playing, you see this face, I'm not playing. I didn't ask you, I didn't, stop, stop. Okay. What you mean stop, okay. he supposed to let do that? Um, I know he should, hey, come here. If it was about ego and stuff, it would be, get him out of here. But it's not about that. You just can't take it personally. Because most of the anger is about their life situation. It's displaced onto you, and they're acting out. Y'all don't care. Y'all make him. But you're, he's, you're, he's sitting here talking and to you. And what are you going to do? Say, he's not going to do nothing. Said, he's going to still be in the mall. You've got to calm down. Nobody helped me nothing. The girl cop, lady cop, and everybody was sitting there. The only thing that's going to stop him from graduating is not, not the attendance and not getting the grades. What's going to be the breaking point is his anger. You see, I'm mad at I'm shaking. Come on, come on. I just got choked off the ground. Would he survive in any other school environment besides this? I don't know if he's going to survive in this one. Lawrence, stop. Don't go out that door. Go ahead and walk. Go ahead and walk. And he'll be back tomorrow. He might not be back on time, but he'll be back.
because this is the best he's got. Marcus stayed in jail two or three nights, got out. We tried to get him to come up here to school to kind of talk about what the consequences were going to be, what the next steps were, where, where we go from here. So he agreed to come in Saturday morning, 9 or 10 o'clock. I talked to him at probably 9.30 or 10, and I said, OK, well, go ahead and get your hair done, and then call me when you get done. And here we are at 1 o'clock, and I haven't heard from him. At this point, he's, uh, I'm worried that he's avoiding us. Sorry, I'm trying to find Marcus. Are there any other hair places around here? Barber shop at the end of the strip center. Hi, I'm hunting down a kid. And I think he was coming here to get his hair cut. Nada? Nothing. That was all women. It looks like. Marcus ditched me. I just thought that he was the one that I had to worry about the least as far as surviving and making it. He smokes marijuana, and if he was in jail for three days, I imagine he really wanted to smoke. So um, I'm thinking that maybe that's what he went to do. He didn't go get his hair done. Does that surprise you? Mm-hmm. Because. I thought, I mean, he, when, he, when I talked to him this morning, he was, it was very sincere, it was very normal. And I said, I'll call you back or whatever. And then every time I tried to call back, he didn't answer the phone. Hello? Mr. What? Marcus. Hey. Where are you? Good I've been looking for you. It's 2.20. I want you to tell me what time you're going to be here. Okay, so in the next 20 minutes. Maybe I was right and you were wrong. What? That he wasn't getting high. We'll see if he, if he shows, we'll see. Yeah. What? Do you realize that this is your last chance? Yeah. What happens if you are sent to CEP for three months? Um, There's no future. Not, There's no, right, but that means you have no future, right? I mean, it means you don't play football, you don't graduate, you don't finish. I mean, that's the bottom line. This is it, this is everything right here. HISD has a zero tolerance policy on drugs. And I think HISD policy is 90 days at CEP. CEP stands for Community Education Partners. If kids are expelled or suspended or when kids do something, CEP is where they go. It's kind of like our consequence. If we sent Marcus to CEP, I'm 90% sure that would be the end for him. He wouldn't go. He'd drop out, and he'd probably end up doing whatever he had to do to make money and survive. He would not finish. I can't go back to CEP. I went my ninth grade year. Every class, I slept, and I still managed to make a, at least a C or a B. And then the second year, I went my 10th grade year. I was supposed to go there for 60 days again. It took me like a hundred and something days. It was a lot. I, I didn't go to school at all, like ever. It was, I, no, it, it wasn't good. So where do we go from here? Give me one more chance just to come to school every day on time. You know, no trouble, you know, none of that. And could you let me, let me finish this year at Sharpstown and next year and play football? Even if you play football, you got to deal with the rest of your life. That's why I was asking you about how you're going to deal with some of the stuff with home and all that stuff. I mean, the home situation, I mean, it's bad, you know. But I mean, I can, it's, it, I can handle it. I mean, I've been handling it for 17 years. Right. You know, 
Cause my mom, I love my mom to death. She a good mom. Like she, she take care of her business, mm -hmm. but she drink. That's what she do. But I mean, I know I, I can just, I can make it better for him. I know I can help him if I do right and get everything I gotta do together. If we were to send Marcus to CEP or somewhere else right now, we're like basically saying you're not gonna make it. He's plugged into us. If he's not gonna make it here, he's not gonna make it. I'm leaving this open right now, and I'm willing to give that opportunity, but like I said, the window's closing, and you have to open it back up. Honestly speaking, I wouldn't have went to CEP. I probably would've just dropped out. And Mr. Gasparello making this, like, making this happen for me, I appreciate it a lot. And I'm going to do my part. I have to. I'm going to do my part. Make it work. Yes, sir. I got you. I'm going to make it work. Marcus says the right things. And um, I'm hoping that more than saying those things, he's got to want to do it to make that change because he wants something better and he owns it. And that's the thing I'm not sure about on him yet. Marco. What happened? Where were you yesterday? That one, I was at home sick. Don't play. I was. You skip. Be honest, you did senior skip day? Yeah. Marco has had attendance problems, so that's why I stay on him. You know it's gonna end up costing you. You have nothing to say now, huh? So we can able to keep a grasp on him. We have to kind of check in with him regularly to make sure that he knows that we are there watching you. Don't try to. Fight and get out of it, Marco. Do what you have to do I am. so that you can get out of here. Right now, you're on that verge. Either you're going to do it or you're not. I get worried about my credits because I better have 12.5 and I need 26 to graduate. That's a lot. Can you do that? I, I know I can. Just Saturdays, coming every Saturday, I think I can. I just got to put my effort to, you know, so I can graduate this year. I can see that he is taking more initiative and he's being honest and, and owning up to what he needs to do. So hopefully he'll pull through and graduate. Yeah, together we can. Whatever it takes. No excuses. All right, make it happen. I will. I'm so not playing with you. So you know what that bill means? Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> Sparkle, where have you been? She was helping me with something. How many of you have been able to find information about your college costs, tuition and fees so far? Sparkle, how's it going? Hmm? She is definitely slipping because she's not interested. She's not coming. She's not here for the discussion, so she's getting really low grades in every area of my class grading. How much will you miss this week? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Friday. Have you, so are you here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know, miss. I don't. I, I am. I don't remember. I, I think. I know I wasn't here yesterday. I came Wednesday. I came to. I wasn't here Monday. I was here Tuesday and Wednesday. And today. Pretty much, I need to know where you've been. Because I haven't seen you since we had the big talk about you need to really think about how to get here, be here. Is this funny? No, miss. My Why does your head hurt? Oh my. This is the first day I've been close to you, and you smell like you've been smoking, or like someone around you has been smoking. I don't know. I been smoking. Has somebody around you been smoking today? I don't know. I've been at school all day. I've never smelled any smoke on you before ever during class, but when I was over here working with you, I'm like, mm, it smells kind of like weed. And I'm not trying to insult you, I'm just saying, I haven't seen you, and then you're saying, I don't feel well, and you're late to class. I'm like, what is going on? No, it ain't no smoke. Okay. The fact that again, she smells very strongly of marijuana, I'm gonna follow up with that. I don't believe what she said about, no, I've been at school, and no, no one around me was smoking. Mm -mm, there's no way.
I'm not nervous. If I get in trouble, I just get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I just went to get her from grad lab and Miss Sharp told me that she said I don't want to work I have a headache I'm hungover so what'd you do yesterday Sparkle continues to be a project you home all day? we have continually reached out provided provided and provided for her to try to accommodate her needs okay. she's good probably just hung over she's got a great mind She's not a stupid kid, but those life things weigh on her. I don't know how resilient I could be and if I'd be able to get to school either. That's not an excuse. No excuses, but gosh, that's pretty tough stuff. You can't do school the way you are right now. It just, um, it just made me forget about it, go to sleep. And I understand, I get it, that there's a lot of pain. But they just put a little mask over the pain for a little bit. And when the mask comes off today, you feel worse and the pain's still there? Yes, sir. Okay. You don't want to say, hey, you're not even in our district, we don't have to do this, but at some point, you, we have to say, we've done everything humanly possible to help you and you, you don't want that help. And she's about at that point. There's only so much we can do in order to be effective at what we're doing and to help as many students as we can. You've got to be able to let go of some of them. You gonna be on time tomorrow? I feel like it's gotten to a point where, with Sparkle and Lawrence both, I think I've started to feel like they may not make it. What time did you get to school today? Uh, like one o'clock. Like that's kind of late. The deadline is May 1st for all seniors to get all classes completed. I know it, it wasn't the best aspect of coming at one, but at least I still made it able to come. At least I didn't just stay like, okay, I'm gonna stay home and sit here and have nothing completed for the day. He's not doing or finishing what he needs to finish. It doesn't seem like he's taking it seriously. Let me see. Let me see. Trying to log in his computer. Lawrence doesn't have adults in his life. I did triple dog, triple donut dare y'all do that. Right now he's a kid that's on his own and nobody's telling him what to do. So I feel like he still needs high school, not just for the academics, but for the structure. Come on, Lawrence. He's on a list that's put out that says, okay, these are the seniors in grad lab that at this point are not getting credit for their classes so they won't walk and they won't graduate. It's not really bad, but it's what you need to take care of. You have English 4A, Chemistry A, Health, Spanish 2B. He has seven classes that he needs to get credit for. He's on the fast track to do it, but he needs to work harder and come more often to get completed. If I get all them Khalid Pity by spring break, what that mean? Then that means you'll be able to graduate in May. If we don't get these completed, then that means August. It's, it's, it's no, none of that. It's going to be completed. Okay. If I can get him here, he can do it. We just need him here every day. If you have a problem and you can't get some of this stuff done, then what we're going to have to do is just kind of double up. Okay? All right. You need to come to school. to school on time. If he doesn't follow suit to what I was telling him today, he will not graduate because he needs those classes in order to graduate. It made me kind of scared a little bit, like I have all this to do in a little bit of time, but it's gonna help me either I'm gonna put up or shut up, that's how I do. What were your goals? Goals, got six. Come to school on time every day. Right? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Check. Raise Spanish grade from a 22 to a 65. Did you do that? To a 70. The stars have aligned for Marcus. Nobody expects him to be perfect, but, you know, Brandy hasn't been having to take him to school. He's been here early, checks in like he's supposed to. So we're in a better place than we were when he was in jail two weeks ago. 
Okay, Marcus, you're gonna go ahead and read your essay. Will you sit at the front for me? It's been real hard, you know, but I'm making it work. You know, I've been, I done brought every one of my grades up. Came to school every day on time, basically following the plan. I'm making it happen though, it's, it's going good. But it's hard though, it's hard. I, mean, I, I, I wanna quit, but I'm not a quitter, so you know. As we start to write goals for next week, the first one, what should it be? What's something right now that you're not doing that you should be doing? Mm, I don't know. I'm looking for something specific, something that you know that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. Because mm -hmm. I've been smoking for so long, like so long, every day. And like, I can't remember the last day I didn't smoke. This when week? I go home, I'm, I go straight to the, to the weed, man. I'm so used to it, it's like a daily routine. So you're telling me you can't do something to try to stop? I ain't say that. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna give it my all, like I've been doing. And hopefully I come out on top like I want to. We'll do whatever it takes for you to come to school. Whatever you need, you can ask us, we'll help you. Sparkle had connected with Yosef Workin, our business manager. All we need you to do is just come to school. Not only you're helping yourself, you're helping your family. She could relate to his background because he was orphaned at a very young age, came to this country with no family, and I think that she saw traits in him that she could relate to and aspire to be. So there's no excuse then. I want you to promise me that you'll come to school from now on. I honestly thought she was on the path to dropping out. And then we kind of hooked her back in at the last minute when we saw her, you know, teetering at that precipice of, well, I'm about to throw everything away. Where have you been since the last time we talked a few weeks ago in my office? Um, Doing what? When we had all met Mr. Yosef, myself, and Sparkle, she didn't go into deep specifics, but she had to leave where she was living, she had to move away, she couldn't trust anyone. I mean, really a lot of drama. What is the thing that I told you that changed your perception about you wanted to stay in school? Because I see that success could come from anybody. Anybody can be successful. We met with her, gosh, I don't know, for maybe an hour. And then she and I came in here and talked some more, and she just really let a lot of stuff out. So I felt like maybe this was the moment we were really going to turn the corner with her. And then she was withdrawn. What happened was um, she promised that she's going to come to school on uh, Saturdays, on regular days, but she never did. Finally, Mr. Gasparello has decided that they have given her so many chances and they can't, you know, they can't keep doing this. When we said with Sparkle, we're doing all the giving and you're not. And that's got to be understood that you've got to reciprocate. And if you can't do that, then you can't be here. And then she said, OK, I don't want to be here. She withdrew on March 2nd. I'm running her withdrawal form. Mr. Leva, hey. can I get you to withdraw? Sign the withdrawal for Tanika. Okay. She's been in and out of so many schools, so I really believe this won't be her last. She has two more years to go, and she's 17 at the moment. Um, I don't know, a lot of them do give up at 18. I feel like this was a special situation, a student with extremely challenging life circumstances. And we then missed the opportunity to follow through and actually support her in the ways we said we would. Sparkle was given lots of opportunities to come back 
and was given support. She got the sense of almost entitlement where, you know, we were going to do whatever we needed to do to help her, but she didn't buy in enough to do the things she needed to do. As a matter of fact, she called me yesterday, and I can show you the text message that she said. I have nowhere to go. It's raining, and all my stuff is outside. Can you please just reply back? And I said, please call me. And it really, I mean, it, it really hurt me last night. It just, it just hurt me so bad. I said, how can somebody can live like this? So I was going to call her today. The cricket number you have called has been temporarily disconnected. Message 22, that HOU. Mean? That means that her phone is disconnected since last night. Everyone does all jobs, counselor, social worker, parent, all of that. But ultimately, we're not equipped to deal with these kinds of circumstances that the students either find themselves in or put themselves in. And yet, do you feel like the world expects you guys to solve these problems? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the famous phrase I hear from folks over and over is, oh my goodness, God bless you all. Your work is so noble, I could never do it. And I'm thinking, you're right. Most people cannot do this work, but you want us to be miracle workers. Like, you guys take care of it. I'm gonna stay over here in my comfortable job that I leave at work when I go home, you know? But um, yeah, I think we're, we're definitely held to a higher standard. If you increase the pressure, what happens to the solubility of a gas? Increase. It increases. You gotta have quality teachers in all of your classrooms. Having said that, we already know, if we balance this year's budget, this coming year's budget cut 45 million out. We already know now the following year we're going to have to cut 52 million more. The thing about improving schools, we know what to do. It's whether or not we have the courage to do what we know. But I just don't understand ethically how you can walk away and year after year after year after year see these kinds of schools when you know what to do to fix them. And it's just, it, to me, I don't understand it. I get angry when I think about it. These are our kids. They're all our kids. By and large, if you're a high school dropout, good jobs are no longer available to you. And so you're destined to probably a lot of unemployment over the course of a lifetime. And then we see these large numbers of high school dropouts that really start filling our prisons. And that's when you become a significant burden on society. It would be so much less expensive if we were less short-sighted and started saying, what can we do with our public schools to truly make that investment now um, and really make more of our children successful. I think one of the interesting things about Sharpstown is that they are part of this larger Apollo 20, sort of this experiment within the Houston Independent School District to turn around schools. And it's an experiment that everyone in public education really should be watching because at some point, if as a public we want to turn around the worst of our schools, and if we now have the formula, we're going to need to come up with the dollars. Good morning, Apollos. Welcome to day 137. It is Tuesday, March 20th, 2012. It's an SAT day at Sharpstown High School. Have you already taken the SAT? No. Nope. You haven't? You haven't taken the SAT, but you've already applied for college and... So I don't take my SAT. So does, do I need to take him to, to his room to take his SAT? He's saying he hasn't taken the SAT. How do you want to handle this? I uh, take, uh, go, I, uh, okay. Uh, you know what, but. No, I am worried Lawrence? About. Lawrence, what are you doing? Just take it and, and find out where you're at. Then, then you can plan from it. High school, it's getting tiresome. It's like a big amusement park. It's full of ups and downs, but after a while, you don't, you get tired of riding the rides, right? 
if I don't get you in there, once they get started, we won't be able to do this. And we won't be able to do it. But that, that's a bad choice. I take it as something. They, they don't, they, you just don't, that's not the way it works. You said you were focused and wanting to be here. But you, were those just, I have no idea to take. It's not a test that you pass or fail. It's a test that you take and it gives you a score. Go get it and I'll take it. You, you can't do it on your terms. Because you, you're getting mad because I don't want to take a test. I'm not mad. I'm just okay, giving I'm take test. That, That's fine. OK, but you can't just go where you want to go because we are testing up there. Sit in the office and oh, we'll I'm figure. I'm going to sit in your office. I'm going to go to Red Lamp. We just have kids that deal with so much more than what a typical 16 or 17 year old should be dealing with. 70% of the time, more of the issues that we deal with on a daily basis have to do with things outside of academics and instruction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the baggage that these kids bring to school every day. Come here. Lawrence, stop. Stop. Okay, so are you gonna go take this test? That's it. Do you want to take it or not? I'm not forcing you. Walk away from me again, and you're out of here. This is rude and disrespectful. OK, that's it. You made that choice. Everything I do for you, and I sit there and I try to talk to you, and you turn your back on me and walk away, you can't act like that. You can't act like that. I don't care what's going on. You can't act like that. You can't, you look at me. You show me the respect of looking at me and talking to me. So you're just supposed to just embrace your opinion and your opinion is supposed to matter. It, it, it is supposed to matter to me. No, but you have to be respectful and you're not. And y'all ain't respectful. I'm trying to tell you, you gotta be still I'm talking. not respectful to you. Say it again. I'm not respectful to you. Is that what you're telling me? You're kidding me? You call me because you're locked out of your apartment. Seven o'clock at night, I'm cooking dinner with my family, and what do I do? Bring me money. Okay, and I'm disrespectful to you. That action means that you have the right to turn your back on me and walk away. Why do I do anything for you? You are rude and disrespectful. I mean, Lawrence, are you kidding me? I bend over backwards. My time with my family, do you know how often at night with my family, you text me and call me and say, can you order me a pizza? Can you do this? I have three kids at home that I never see because I'm up here all the time. And you don't even appreciate it. You turn your back on me. You don't even appreciate what I do for you. I do everybody like everybody do me. I've never done you that way. I've never turned my back on you. In due time, all you're going to do is all okay. show. Okay, so that's why you're doing it. Okay, so do you want to withdraw? Because you obviously don't want to be here. How I don't want to be here? Because you're disrespectful and rude, and we cannot. I don't want to take this test. You keep trying to force it like I have to take this no, test. No, I said you don't have to take the I test. Said, okay. He's disrespectful and rude to everybody. After everything that I've done for him and the support that I've given him, it just pisses me off. He just has so much drama. It's frustrating me because I feel like he's got this chip on his shoulder and we can't rebuild any of it. You giving up on him? No, I'm just frustrated right now. He has no one. His mom has been in a, out of prison and, and I think that's kind of worn on him a lot. Sit down. For what? Because I need to finish talking with you. So, can you please leave? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out a way to make it work for you and every time we turn around, it's. We're babysitting, or there's drama. Well, you don't know nothing in my life. You don't know nothing what I go through. And you just keep saying, oh, you know the same, the same old three line stuff. And you don't like to hear that? No, it don't. OK. But all you hear is every, everybody else say, so it. Just like you saying to me, I don't care no more. Bye. OK. He thinks the, the world can just revolve around what his moods and stuff are. And I can't, we can't do that. Tomorrow when you come back, you'll deal with Officer Ruffin. He's got too much other conflicts going on, so we'll see. To be continued, we'll see.
Tämä on hauska, kun tässä on meille hämeä ja siistiä. We will have kids drop out. There's no way around it. But hopefully they go somewhere else, and we know where they went to. That's the goal. This is the room where we keep the files for the students who are leaving or who have left Sharpstown. When a student leaves, I get a folder, and my job is to find proof that the student, where they are, get an acceptable code for the state so that they don't become a dropout. Why is it important for you to have the numbers in order? The state requires it. Our whole rating system for being acceptable as a school depends on it, which means our money. It's all about money. It's all about being an acceptable school. Unfortunately, the education system has sort of created this culture of wanting to make itself look good. And I think that's all well and good. But any time performance is judged upon the numbers that you give me, we know that we need to double check those numbers. When we look at Sharpstown High School, there was an expectation of 343 kids graduating in the class of 2011. The actual number that they had was 177. What happened uh, to the other 166? 45 were marked as dropouts. 38 of those kids stayed in school. Still maybe fifth or sixth year, they'll, they'll graduate from high school. 34 were said to be going to other states. 18 going back to home country. But I think this is the key thing. They said 32 going to Texas private schools. And, you know, that is highly improbable. What are the chances that lots of kids from a high poverty high school are moving to a private school? The private school numbers are high. I tried to steer them away from the private schools. Most people, when they think about private school, they think about your 2000 tuition a month type of private school. But these private schools, what they are is you, you go in and you pay a certain set amount, 300 to whatever it is, and you take a packet home. You check out the answers and you give the packet back and you get a diploma. Just like that? Mm-hmm. Like, how quickly? Uh, from what I can tell, you can get it within a day. We've had a student, um, he wasn't coming to school. Um, the language, I think, was a barrier from where he came from. So the mom said that she was going to send him to a private school. They withdrew one day. They came back the next day with their diploma on the same day that they withdrew. Was he even a senior when he withdrew? No. He was not a senior. So, but as far as the, the state of Texas is concerned, that kid's not a dropout. No, because it's a good code. That school is a private school. But it's not necessarily bad for Sharpstown High School. It doesn't affect No, you. it doesn't affect our number, but it, it, it affects my morals. We have to have something to prove where they are. If I can't prove any of that, that they're in an educational setting or they've got their degree, they're a dropout in Texas. Only acceptable excuse you can use is to say, I'm going back to my home country. And then we don't require any proof, just a statement. Is that one easy to abuse then? Probably, but I don't think it's abused as much as what you think. I was supposed to in Mexico. I dropped out for a whole semester. They didn't, I didn't have to prove nothing, you know, they were just like, okay, he's going to Mexico, that's it. And that was it. Like, I was gone, like, supposedly, I was gone. Yeah, it showed that he left and went home to Mexico a couple of times, and then he came back to the States to go ahead and finish his education. But so you were never going to go to Mexico? No. I don't, I don't even plan on going there. I don't plan on going to Mexico ever in my life. Then that, <laughs> maybe that we've had some situations like that, that um, they say that they're going to go back home, and then they don't, but there's no way of us covering that. So 
we just go on their word that they're actually going back home. But, I mean, by the looks of it, he probably didn't because since he came back here, yeah. But there's plenty of kids out here that do that, especially at this school, yeah. I think there's a lot. Marcus in March was doing really well, and it lasted for two or three weeks, and then he ended up disappearing. It's been a roller coaster. Two and a half weeks, there's been little to no contact. He hasn't been on campus. Sometimes you just have to be persistent. I text him almost every day and just say, where are you? You should be here. A lot of kids, if they stay in the environment that they're in, no matter what we do, that environment will take them and chew them up and, and spit them out. So he's out on the streets doing who knows what. I've been getting money, hustling, just, just, just getting it. Mm -hmm. This doesn't sound legal. It's not. It's not. We're trying to figure out if he's going to choose to drop out. It's, it's very likely at this point. It's kind of the hardest one on me, because I feel like this one should make it. He's got football, which it should be a motivation. But now I'm starting to realize that in his case, all of that stuff may not matter. Yeah. Because people at the school, they expect so much from me. And like, I'm not this little, just this preppy school kid. That's, that's not, I ain't never been that. And it's hard trying to become that. Man, poop. <laughs> I know I have to go to school and graduate. Like, I know this in my heart. But like, it's just everything in my body, like, my mind, like, do not want to, but I know I need to. So it's like, that's why I'm there sometimes, then I'll be away, then I'll come back, and then I'll go back away. I was supposed to battle some nigga the other day, bro. The next day, that boy got killed. Because sometimes I could be feeling like, forget all the other bull crap, I'm coming to school and do my work every day. I'm not finna play no more. But then, like, my old mind said, just let's go grind, let's go get it. You need some money in your pocket. I know it's temporary, but it's like everybody around you, they know too. So it's like they tell me all the time, go go to school, fool. Stop being stupid. Yeah, I really can't tell them, but that's what the game is. Because like all my older partners and stuff, most of them dropped out. Got clear. Man, I say they this life up. But they know I'm gonna end up if I drop out. I'm gonna be just like them. They don't want to see me like that. My mama told me that's all she want me to do is graduate. But it's, it's so many things that just jump in the way of it, like these streets. That's a big part of it, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard. Oh, they, they, uh, took, they took the uh, niggas out, out the... Uh, he got Randy Moss? Uh, unfortunately, I was supposed to 10 Sharp Town still, but my actions got me kicked out. It just seems like Sharp Town was not a fit for me. It's, I was not supposed to be here for that long. I'm surprised I, made, I lasted this long. What happened with Lawrence, it was just a series of things. Yeah, I don't think there was one thing that broke the camel's back, but he just became so unmanageable and angry. So at that point, we just needed to part ways. Some kids can't do school. Yeah, I've been hearing that in my story that my whole life. Like, you're very smart, you're intelligent, but you don't want to fit the rules, you don't want to obey by the rules. In a sense, I don't. I'm gonna do it my way, because that's how it's been for so long. Greg, quit playing with me. <laughs> it was really hard for a while. It, it hurt that I couldn't get him to change and fix things or take things differently or make better choices or, you know, appreciate what was being offered to him. All the stuff she did for me, she didn't deserve that. She didn't deserve me going off on her like that. I felt like a complete ass You might get blamed. Guess what? 
the first two weeks, I was like, I'm done with school. Sat home, uh, chill, play basketball. Blew off my day. Thought I had fun, like, in my mind, like, oh, this is a fun experience, da da da. But after you really sat down and thought about it, it wasn't. It's like, man, do I want to live like this? Do I want to steep doing the same stuff over and over and over? This is boring, this is dumb. So I decided I want my diploma still. Lawrence enrolled in Twilight which is considered a, a separate school. It's on our grounds. Glad you made it. Then it's kind of HISD's way of trying to help kids that may have dropped out because they can't attend school from eight to three or eight to four. They need something more flexible. I'll just go through HISD and officially enroll you. I think it really helps us. Not as many kids are dropping out because they have another way to finish school and get their degree. So when we start here. But I think it's very possible for him to graduate by August. It's probably would be better for me because I'll be by myself, so there's no distractions or nothing. It's me, my work, and the time I got to do it. I can come from four to eight. It's not long. A couple hours, do my work, I can get out of there quicker. More me time, more I'll be focused. And just try to new step towards a better life. I started my career at a school that it was more of an affluent neighborhood, kids that had a lot of good home support and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I hate to say it, but I felt like I really wasn't needed. I feel like that's why I'm doing this, to make a difference. And so I enjoy being at schools like this where there are kids that really do need an adult to help them. Parker, did you get everything in your backpack? Yes. Brandy thinks outside the box. I have a tremendous amount of respect for her. She's a very good high school teacher, working with kids that no one else wanted to work with and making a difference for them. You ready? I don't know how she balances. She's got little kids. Her husband is a saint. It's like that person who takes in strays. Every time she sees a stray, she takes them in. Marcus! Marcus asked if, for the remainder of the year, he could stay with me. Marcus! He's been staying with me for two and a half, maybe three weeks now. Let's see if Marcus is ready. Okay. He felt like part of his struggle getting to school every day was his self-discipline at home at night. I think he just needed someone to provide a little bit more structure and get him there. Marcus, ready? I'm almost ready. Okay. Football season is coming, so I knew I had to come back. I can't miss football season. Never. I gotta be here. I knew for sure I was gonna come every day, like for sure. And and, and I have. But I actually got a chance to go to college. I might as well take it. You know, the streets gonna be there forever. I can always come back to them, but college, that's pretty much a only opportunity I got is right now. Might as well try, try something new. What are you gonna take to eat? Obviously this scenario is not one that could be done for tons of kids. It's unconventional, unrealistic. I love you. This is a very unique situation where I just had a connection with a student that I felt like really needed support. I mean, I also feel guilty because I know there's lots of kids out there, and how do you pick and choose who to provide this much support for? Marco came in this year. We sat down, we completed his graduation plan together, and as we were looking at his transcript, I'm like, oh, Marco, I don't know. It was pretty bleak. He just said, you know, Miss Church, you know, I want to graduate this year. And I said, I want you to graduate as well. I said, however, you know, right now, I need for you to accomplish in one year what it takes most students to accomplish in two years. 
Ese pico que tenía al tucán se lo llevó. Ese pico que tenía. I am elated to say that through all of Marco's hard work and his dedication, as well as his commitments to get the job done, Marco is now ready and able to graduate on time. <laughs> That's when you're gonna put on your cap and gown, get yourself together. We need to line you up. This is a serious ceremony to acknowledge you for your success. Well, my mom, she thought I was gonna graduate in August. Now she's on since June. She's like happy. Like this morning, I texted her, and she told me how much would a cap and gown be, and I was like fifty dollars. And she's like, do you want me to buy? I was like, no, I got money saved up. I'll buy it. She even told me, hey, do you want me to throw, give you, do you want me to do that day, a party or something somewhere? And I told her, no, nah, I don't know yet, but most likely I'm going to just take me out to eat at Olive Garden, that's it. He's going to graduate and he's going to go in the Army because he couldn't afford college, and he's going to hopefully have a decent life. Good, you still with that one? Make sure you're with your advocacy. I have something planned to do after high school now. You know, they say, you're, you may be strong, but then there's Army strong. And that's what I want to be. And it's just like a different opportunity for me just to experience more. The issue is marching in properly. You go come down the center aisle, turn with your partner, and go to the end of your road to your teacher. I'm proud to be born in the U.S. My parents wasn't. I think I'm blessed to be born here because I get to do more than them. Sit up, straight, smile. Stand up. And I could be a role model to my sisters and cousins, because now they're looking up to me too. And my aunts, they respect me. When I go over, sometimes they'd be like, look at the soldier, look at the soldier. And I'm like, calm down, I'm still the same person. I'm still your cousin, I'm, st I'm still family. Just because I'm in the army doesn't mean I'm a change, so. I guess this is my year now. <laughs> I need y'all to smile. to announce your 2012 prom king and queen. Good morning, Apollos, and welcome to the last day of school. It is Thursday, May 31st, 2012. The algebra end of course exam test results had come back. Okay. So we had a meeting to talk about the scores. This is the results based on met minimum for 2012 and 2013. So if you see, we're at 79% for satisfactory. Notice that our advanced is the highest in the district. You know, I'm not going to show the biology and the world geography and everything else, but math is by far the best. Our students are the top students in HISD comprehensive high schools. <laughs> This is preliminary, but when you look at our algebra scores, they are amazing. Our kids performed at a higher level than most other comprehensive high schools in HISD. This is proof right here. Part of that accomplishment was due to the fellows and the math lab and the tutorials and the Apollo 20 program. It's paid off because our kids are doing better than, you know, most of the other schools in the district. It shows, it shows, because when you look at that and you consider where our kids are coming in, you know, you guys grew them huge. And this is very exciting. Initially, a lot of things look very good about Apollo 20. We're seeing good data at Sharpstown High School. We're seeing good data from some schools. But we're not seeing in all 20 of the schools, you know, all, all 20 of them are not being turned around. But I think it's very early to draw broad conclusions. While all the indicators look good, I think time will be able to help us in terms of determining whether this is the answer to our dropout problems. And our kids level. Have we fixed it? No, no way. But I think we're improving it. I want people to see, OK, they're obviously doing something right over there. Congratulations. It's awesome. Yeah. 
So while I was having the celebration with the math fellows, across the hall, Marcus punched a student in his class. That's what I thought, man. You don't know how to stop sneaking people, nigga. Yeah. Sneak my little brother, bitch ass nigga. Yeah. Go away. Alright. Go, go. Uh, go. You need to be hurt. I'm sorry, right home. So we don't know where Marcus is? I'm yeah. calling. Where are you? Why? Why? Okay. I hope it was worth it. Because you're done. You're done. You're done. I hope it was worth it. You're done. You're done with Sharpstown. You're done with football. It's over. He needs oh, yeah. to get back in and we're going to deal with it. Marcus, you need to get back up here to school and sit down with Mr. Gasparello. Now. I was shocked. I mean, and I was very disappointed. Bye. Because here it was, we were literally two hours from the end of the year. Hey, how we doing? Hey. All right, gotta come. Okay. What happened? I mean, I wanted to fight the dude a long time ago. But it was too much stuff I would have loved. This isn't the streets. These, these aren't, this isn't how we settle things. So if you had an issue with him, don't you think there could have been a better way of dealing with this? Yeah. Now, he wants to press charges right now. You, 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 you what's going to happen when you go to court again? I can't put you on a football team representing this school. If that's the mentality you have that, well, I'm not going to fight him here, I'm going to fight him at school. What do you think Coach Blacklock's going to say? I wasn't trying to jeopardize all that. I really but wasn't, you, but... But you did. It is everything. I just can't even imagine what you were thinking in the middle of class. You just decided to start punching him. You talk about how good you've been doing for the last month, but have you changed the way you think about what's important and prioritize? No, you haven't. I have with a lot of stuff. But, but not that. I mean, that doesn't make sense. There are no throwaway kids. Even that kid that disappointed you and frustrated you and not held up there into the bargain and what have you, um, they don't want to do that. I don't think you can go into it saying, oh, we won one, we lost one. You just, you take everyone for as long as you can go and give them as many opportunities as you can knowing full well that you're not going to be able to save every one of them. But you have a moral obligation to try. Just sort of plug away each day, and then in the end, some have made it, some haven't, and some are in between. Otherwise, you go crazy. Um, I think you really, really would. be able to keep a track of those students that are potential dropouts because they're gonna have to enroll in school. When it comes to the data and the numbers, this is a ongoing day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, yearly process. It never stops. So when Daniela came, she supplied the, the private school that she was at. As long as we have good code to know where they're going and where they're at, so they don't count as far as our um, dropout rate. I think he was, he's a 98 dropout. In 2012, we had 18 students that I'm currently counting as dropouts. Two of those may or may not be. We're talking an official definition of dropout for the state records and the way they define it. But no, I'm sure many, many more did not get a diploma somewhere. The pattern is always the same. The ninth grade always seems to be about 450 kids. And by the time they're 12th graders, it's like 275. Where do they all go? Well, 
I can't tell you where all they went, but, but they go, as all I can say. The ninth grade is the largest, granted. And about half, you're right that it's about a little more than half, 60%, something like that, in the, the 12th grade. But they just slow attrition, and it happens, I think it happens at every school. I think we lose track of a lot of kids. I mean, that's, that's one thing. But you also got to realize that we have a transient population. Our kids come, they go, they come back. We try to document, at least in the two years we've been here, as many of those kids as we can. That's a full-time job. I don't know that we do it better than any other schools. There's a lot of schools that do it better than we do. But that's, that's a hard thing. What we are seeing is more of our kids over the last two years have stayed here. In the sense, the system sets up these really well-intentioned people at these schools to have to record this data in these particular ways that raises lots of suspicion from people like us. But when you see these numbers that don't make a lot of sense around homeschooling, returning to home country, going to private school, all of us should really just say, a lot of kids who should be finishing school are not finishing school. A lot of kids who should be graduating are not graduating. And what are we going to do about it? No, no, no. Pues yo pensé que no iba a llegar a, gra a, gra a graduarse, porque como iba muy, muy atrasado y no se portaba muy bien, mm -hmm. pero pues le echó muchas ganas y salió. ¿Tenemos que el gaño en el albano? Dice que todos los maestros están muy orgullosos de él. Y le doy muchas gracias a todos los maestros que ayudaron a mi hijo, porque él iba muy, muy atrasado, y, pero ellos le lo ayudaron mucho para, para que se graduara. Y pues me da mucho gusto por mi hijo. Y pues él me, me decía, mami, dice, yo pienso que no voy a llegar a caminar en mi graduación. Y yo le decía, échale ganas, mi hijo, échale ganas. I got my name under. I put I made it. I actually put in my name on it because I throw it in the air. Yeah, I'm have it, so. It's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that's my brother, my older brother, because he's a dropout. And I asked him, hey, you gonna come see me? He said, no. Like, he just literally, he's like, no, I'm not gonna go watch you walk the stage. And to me, I was just like, okay, you know, I ain't worrying about everybody, I'm doing better. I'm, I know I'm doing better than him. I mean, that's just what I want her to do. My listen to just be something. I know I'm gonna be gone, but I told her she better pass all her classes and, you know, be, behave, because I don't want her growing up like he did. She don't want me to leave. What's the matter? <laughs> She didn't want me to go to the army, but mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a lot of people was telling me how to go, but I, I'm still Actually. sticking to the plan I want to go. Mm -hmm. You gonna miss him? We get caught up in kids that struggle. If that's the only thing you see, then I don't know that you'd get up and come to work the next day. But we can't lose sight of the fact that at the other end there, and in the middle and in the continuum, there's a lot of good things going on. And that's the joy that keeps you going. Like from officially high school, not a GED or anything like that. Daniel Pena. I actually thought I was never coming back to school too. Before I came, it was like high school's not for me. I'm not going to school. 
I think I wouldn't be graduating at all. Marco Antonio Donovan Serving. Finally, Marco. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. Never doubt, never doubt the way. He made it. I'm so proud of him. Yes, he had a rough start, but his ending, his ending was like he was going for the goal. To me, The silver lining in some of these struggles is it does make some of these kids tougher, resilient, and, and flexible in dealing with life's issues so that they can move forward. I would ask the class one of my last directives to you, take your hand and put it on your tassel. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you as graduates of Sharpstown! I don't think we've overcome the dropout problem by any means. We don't always get it right, we don't always make the best decisions, but I think we're doing a better job with it and we're keeping more kids in school. It's unbelievably hard, but it's doable. If you don't let numbers define who and what your school is about, the kids are the reason we're here. Frontline continues online. Find out what happens next for Marcus. I want to just go to college, period. Learn more about how the Apollo program got started and read more on Houston's last chance schools. Follow up on Texas's quick fix degree programs and find out the real economic value of a high school diploma. Watch the program online and follow Frontline on Facebook and Twitter or tell us what you think at pbs.org slash frontline. For more on this and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org slash frontline. Frontline's Dropout Nation is available on DVD. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Frontline is also available for download on iTunes. Thank you.